There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. How I love Jesus because he first loved me. It tells me of his precious blood who died to set me free. tells me of his precious love. The sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. Amen, amen, amen. What a theme, what a, what a precious theme we have uh, to lean and depend on. How much we know that God loves us and how much he has demonstrated his love toward us through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And so I get great joy out of singing that song, Oh, How Much, How I Love Jesus. Amen. Let me say good evening to you. We're blessed of God and we're thankful to God for, for blessing us with this day. Amen. And we are afforded a new day and we've been given all that we've needed for this day. Amen. Certainly thank God for his grace and his mercy. In obedience to God our Father, Jesus, our Lord, and our Savior, recognizing the presence, the purpose, and the power of the Holy Spirit in respect to um, Dr. Matthew Davis and, and to the New Beginnings Church and to all of the members who are joining in with us and coming on as we began tonight our Bible study. We are certainly grateful to God um, for your commitment and your faithfulness to stay the course. And then I want to thank uh, Pastor Davis for the privilege of allowing uh, me to come and share um, tonight uh, with the people of New Beginnings Church. Thank you so much, Pastor Davis, for your love, and then and then for your 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 willingness um, and your your confidence in my convictions uh, for Christ. I certainly uh, thank God for you. Oh, so and sorry. thank God for all of you uh, who are here tonight out of your faithfulness. And so we come tonight to share the word of God. Amen. Yes, Something that's been blessing me for, um, for a number of times. Uh, all, all So many stories in the Bible. I love, I love the Bible stories. And that's one I think is applicable 
um, to the times in which we're in, I think can give us an encouraging hope when we talk about the P factor of God, the P factor of God. Now you can add an S to that if you would, the P factors of God. Uh, one is his promises. Two is his purposes. Three is his people. And four is his plans. Amen. The P factors of God. And brothers and sisters, when you, when you look at the condition in our world, of course, we who are, who are here now, uh, we, we don't always allow it to resonate in our spirits that, uh, that, that God is uh, in charge and what's going on in the world and on planet Earth is not new to God, but is new to us. And so the word of God has been left uh, for us as a record, a amen. As a record, I remember uh, one of my professors from seminary school, he would sit while teaching class, he would sit and read newspapers from all over the world. He was, he was just that prolific. He had already given assignments. And so when we come to class, he's already ahead of the assignments. And so he would just be uh, tickling our minds, Brother Miles, by asking us to open up our lessons and start asking us questions. But he would be going through different newspapers from all over the world. And uh, he would... Uh, uh, bring up what's going on all over the world uh, with the lessons that he had given us so that he can show us that there is nothing going on that God is not already on top of. Right. And it was amazing uh, um, that we who were students of the scriptures were just discovering that. But he had already come into that knowledge and just to remind us. And so uh, that's all I'm here to do tonight on, on behalf of the Lord and on behalf of Pastor Davis is to remind us, amen, that God has made promises and God is a promise-keeping God, amen? And God has made those promises, watch this, for his own purpose. Many times we look to think that it's about us for the purposes, but we're included in carrying out God's will within his purposes. And I thank God for that. And so let me um, take you to a scripture area for you to see uh, where we want to go and what we want to share with you tonight. Genesis, um, the um, 12th chapter of Genesis. The 12th through the 15th chapters of Genesis are some interesting uh, <coughs> chapters, but I want to beam in, uh, uh, even at this 15th chapter, we are now dealing with um, the fourth covenant promise, which is in the what we call the Abrahamic covenant. We've already... Um, when you get to chapter 15, God has already dealt with the Edenic covenant, the, the, uh, the uh, Adamic covenant, the, the Noahic covenant, and now we're here at the A Abrahamic covenant. And so God has already made four uh, promises uh, to his people with his purpose in mind. And so it's important that you and I know that, that, that we are way up the road in the promises of God, uh, which was fulfilled all in Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we are on the good end of the spectrum. It's just that we have to be reminded. Amen. I was sharing with someone um, um, today, a um, young lady who uh, for the third time I was sharing with her, um, she came and shared 
Uh, I know she's a woman of faith, and she shared with me uh, several months ago um, that uh, she um, she said that they noticed some spots on her mammogram, and I noticed uh, her countenance had changed uh, while working with her, and I asked her, "What's what's going on? Your countenance is not not the same." And she said, well, you know, I got some news, you know, from a mammogram. I said, okay, okay, well, okay. So they told you what they see, but what did God tell you? They told you what they spotted, but what does God know? Anybody hearing me? <laughs> and, um, and so she said, well, you know, they, they said they seen it. I said, I don't care what they see. And the question is, what do you know about God? They may have seen something, but but your countenance ought not demonstrate it is what they say, because they don't know yet. They only seen something on the mammogram, and so she came back the next time for the second test of mammogram to be sure, and they were sure about whatever it is that they saw and. I say, well, they not sure, they just know they see something, but those who do the tech work at the mammogram place can't diagnose you, amen. amen. And so they gave her a schedule to go see a doctor. I say, so between the times you go and get the mammogram testing with the techs and with the time that you gotta go see the doctor is a lot of time that you can be talking with God by faith. They amen, telling you amen. what's going on in your flesh, but but you can have a long talk with God by faith. And uh, so um, uh, she said, "Okay, Reverend, I, I hear." You. I say, "Yeah, you you listening, but you don't hear me because faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God." But to make a long story short. Um, we prayed and shared and talked and, and witnessed with her. And by the time she got to the doctor and, and got back uh, to work, um, they saw fatty tissue. <laughs> but she was all tore up and broke up already as though um, something had already been spoken into her life. And all I'm trying to say to us is we need to be reminded about who God is. Right. Amen. Amen. In, in every circumstance, in every situation, even in the times in which we are, are living, in, and to be honest with you, I have read more devastating things going on in the word of God mm -hmm. than what is going on in these times of ours. And if right. God is on top of what already didn't happen, Certainly, he can be on top of what we're going to go through. Amen? Yes, and so, look at this 11th chapter, 12th chapter, excuse me. The 12th chapter of Genesis says, Now the Lord had said uh, unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make uh, of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Y'all hearing me? Yeah. So Abram departed, and as the Lord had spoken unto him, and uh, Lot went with him, and Abram was 70 and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarah, his wife, and Lot, his brothers, his son, and all their substance uh, that they had gathered, and the souls of they uh, that gotten that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth um, to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land unto 
the place of, of Sechem unto the plain of Morah. And the Canaanites was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, un, and said, Unto thy seed I will give this land. And there built he an altar unto the Lord whom appeared unto him. Amen. Let me stop right there and, and, and share with you the backdrop of this is God has already declared that the people were more evil. Um, the, the land, the people were growing more evil and uh, wicked and, and all of this. And we know a whole lot of things that already happened. You got to remember all of the, the lives of individuals who have already come through. We've seen Ab uh, Abram uh, I mean, uh, Adam uh, and Eve as a family. We've seen Adam and Eve's children and their family. All of this can already transpire. Noah and his family, all of these families have already transpired. And when you talk about the P factor uh, of God, you got you to gotta remember uh, that God made a promise. And every now and then, God has to permit some things to happen in our lives yes, yes. to bring us back to what he promised. Right. You know, we like to remember promises, but for some reason, we seem to forget the promises of God. And, and you know, I shared one time um, uh, in a series of lessons about... Um, of the command of God to remember. You know, we remember a lot of stuff, but we 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 don't hold on to what God, we're commanded to remember. And God wants us to remember, and sometimes God has to remind us by permitting some things to drive us back to his promises. Amen. And uh, uh, to, to help us, uh, to be reminded that he got us. Amen. God is doing a work and it's a blessing to be inclusive in the work. When God decides to use you and I, uh, we ought to find that to be a blessing. The question is, will our faith allow us to be used by God? We want the blessings of God. Amen. But sometimes we don't want the burdens of God. We want the blessings of God, but we don't want the test of God. And we have to be reminded that what God is doing, he also desires to use individuals to get it done. Amen. And so in this uh, 11th chapter or 12th chapter of Genesis, we are introduced again to uh, part of God's purpose and it was through the life of Abram through the life of a man through the life of a woman through the life of a marriage through the life of a family God was going to fulfill his promise and it's important that you and I see that because the promise is with greater purposes than just to bless a man to leave his family, leave his home, leave his his uh his security blanket. You know, he has to trust God and 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 he has to step out by faith to trust God. And we see that 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 it involves family. It's important for you and I to be reminded that 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 God uses people and he uses families to accomplish his purpose and you ought to uh, get excited about that you know it used to be an old song use me lord in thy service you know folk again folk want to be blessed but they don't want to be used and i say this all the time it's a blessing to be used uh, especially by god it's it's a blessing to be used by people not misused but used all of us ought to find value in being used. And if God has gifted you, 
and there are people who meet your gift, that's a blessing. I was always told, don't ever worry about somebody who represents an apple tree. Because if God made you an orange tree, mm -hmm. he gonna give people with an appetite for an orange. Right, you don't right. have to get jealous of the apple tree. <laughs> God will use you to his glory. But whenever you look at a life as an apples or oranges, remember in order for somebody else to enjoy them, that tree has to be picked on. Somebody missed that. <laughs> and so if you are gifted to be used of God, if God has uh, factored you into the equation of his purpose and his promises, then you need to be prepared to be picked on. Amen. And you ought to be willing to be picked on when God has blessed you into the equation. Abram was chosen by God. Abram was chosen by God and Abram was willing to accept that. He heard what God said he wanted to do with him. And you all remember, it was not that many people around this time. It wasn't that many folks around this time, but God was gonna use this man and this woman to bless the nation as I just read to you. Not only is he going to bless and, and make of him a great nation, but then he says at the end of the third verse that, that I, I shall, and all families of the earth shall be blessed. They're going to be blessed. And so you and I need to think about that, that, that it's important that, that when, we, when we come to that place in our faith, when we watching the news, when we hearing what's going on in 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 the political world, when we hear what's going on in in um, Ukraine with Russia, when we hear what's going on with with all of the floods and rains uh, that is going on right now uh, in the East Coast, and all of the fires and heat going on in the West Coast, and all of the freezing going on upstate and all kinds of things are going on around us, we need to still be reminded that God is still in charge. God is permitting creation to remind creature who he is. Amen. God is in charge. He's not, he's not just in charge of humanity. God is in charge of, of the universe. God is in charge of everything. And you and I ought to celebrate the P factor of God, the promises of God. God said he wasn't going to let this world be destroyed of, of, of flood anymore. And so don't get scared about a little rain. Amen. Don't get scared about a little water. Just do what we're supposed to do to keep ourselves safe. But remember, God is at work. Yes, sir. Amen. God is at work with this rain. God is at work in the East Coast and the West Coast. But you and I have to see that by faith. And Abram heard God. Abram submitted himself unto God. He surrendered himself to God. But Abram still had questions just like us. Abram asked God, how you gonna, how you gonna bless me? I'm 75 years old. No, I wanted I wanted some children, but I don't have any, you know. To the point he was saying, What what you gonna let my my servant in the house uh, be my heir? You know, because I don't have any children. God say, No, no, your seed. <laughs> I'm gonna bless you. And brothers and sisters, you and I need to come to that place to remember every noun that God uses, every verb that God uses in his word, every adjective that God uses in his word is exactly what God wants to say. Mm -hmm. When he calls your name, he don't make the mistake trying to call my name. He calls your name. When he rings your doorbell, when he rings the phone in your bosom, in your heart, when he talks to you, at night is for you, and you need to hear that. Abram heard that, but Abram questioned that. But I want you to see that in the midst of this promise, in the midst of this fourth covenant, God makes a covenant with him, with Abram in the 15th chapter, and reminds him again 
that he's going to bless him. Go to the 15th chapter. 15th chapter say, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, see, saying, fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. You see that? And Abram said, Lord God, what would thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is Eliezer uh, of Damascus? And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, uh, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look, now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. What I'm trying to say to us is that when we come to that point of being reminded of God, about God's promises, you and I need to respond. Mm -hmm. You and I must respond. As you can see between the 12th chapter and the 15th chapter, Abram accepted the call, but Abram was concerned about the fact that he had no son. I heard what you told me, but, but some time then went by between the 12th chapter and the 15th chapter. I'd say, no, I didn't, I didn't left my, I didn't left my daddy's land. I'd have left where he told me to leave from home. I'd have made these steps with my family. I'd have went through some stuff uh, with my daddy. <clears throat> you know, he wasn't supposed to take his daddy with him, but he did. But God handled that. Uh, then he took his nephew in whom he wasn't supposed to take, and he went through some problems with that. Listen, listen, let me quickly tell you, if you're going to trust God, trust God. Don't try to add to what God has already promised he's going to do. God knows how to make a promise, and God knows how to keep a promise. You know, sometimes God tells us to do something, and we sometimes go talk to somebody to just kind of get a little bit more clarity on it. it you know, sometimes we'll do that. Sometimes we'll invite somebody into what God has told us to go handle alone. We got to be careful about that. If God tells us that, you know, just as God tells us something, God will tell us if he want us to uh, get somebody involved in it. I never shall forget, uh, I was working for the National Convention, involved with the National Convention, and um, I called my brothers. I have, I have three brothers, there's four of us. And I called, I, my, the Lord told me to call my oldest brother. I called my oldest brother and said, hey, I have to make a trip. To Albuquerque, New Mexico, and um, I'm, I'm going to need uh, sponsorship, some finances. He said, "Well, you need to, you need to. If God told you to go to Albuquerque, God should have gave you some money. You don't need to be calling me about going to Albuquerque. I ain't got no money to give you. And you know what you need to do is cancel that trip to Albuquerque and find you some work and work." I said, "Oh, okay." I said, "All right, brother." I said, "Not a problem." Not a problem. So I got off the phone with him. Two days later, he called me crying, Brother Miles. He was crying. <laughs> Do you hear me? He said, I need to talk to you. I said, what you need to talk? What's wrong, big brother? He said, uh, I had a dream. <laughs> I said, okay. I said, okay. He said, uh, and uh, I, I, I know what you called me about the other day. And so I need you to meet me somewhere so you can get this credit card from me. I said, a credit card? He said, yeah, I want you to take this credit card. And uh, he said, and uh, I, was, I think I was only asking him for $300. And when he saw me, he said, you can spend $600. I just don't want to have no more of them kind of dreams. <laughs> he never told me about the dream. He just told me he understood the dream. And so I went to Albuquerque, came back. I might have spent $30 on his credit card because God had already blessed other means. 
And when I got back, gave him his credit card and told him I spent $30, $60 or something. Uh, he called me a few days later and said, I need to meet you. I said, you need to meet me? He said, yeah, I need to meet you. So I met with him and he said, now I told you, the Lord told me to tell you to spend $600 and you spent $60. Here's the rest of it. Because I don't want to get in trouble with God. Somebody missing that. Somebody missing that. And I had absolutely nothing to do with that. God had everything to do with that. I just trusted God about going to do the work. I was new in the National Convention, uh, working for them, and um, um, uh, pretty soon after that, they picked me up and financed everything, and I didn't have to call them up. That was a move of God. What I'm saying to you is that God may tell you to, to do something, and, and God uh, is testing your faith about doing it before he furnish you the finances. Or before he make the way. He might, he he just want to see if you're willing to step out on the water, step out on the trail, step out in the direction that he wants you to go. He he tells Abram that I've made choice of you. Abram responded to it, but Abram had a concern concerning that that God said in the promises. Not only do I have choice of you, Abram, but I'm going to use your seed. I'm going to bless you and your seed. And Abram saying, this don't add up. Here I am. I'm willing to be used, but I don't have no children. And some time that went by, some years that went by. And you still talking about you're going to bless me with a child. And God, I don't see it yet. And God said, I'm going to do it. And you all know the story. Uh, uh, um, he shared with his wife and his wife got in it and wanted to try to help him with that too. And, and he got in trouble. He got in trouble with God. But even making a mistake, God still had purpose. Not only does God make a promise, but God has purpose. And God's purpose is not going to be altered because of our mistakes. And we got to know that. We got to trust that. We got to try God at his word. And Abram, amen, was blessed with his own son. And we know where that story goes to. I want to show you another interesting story that I want to bring you to when we talk about the P factors with the promise, amen, with the purpose, with the people, and with the plan. And go to Exodus 15, and this is where we're going to try to get off on Exodus, excuse me, Exodus 2. Exodus 2. Let me know when you're there. Amen? Exodus 2. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son, and when she saw him, uh, that he was a goodly child, beautiful child, she hid him for three months. And when she could not no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and darbed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein and she laid it in the flags by the rivers by the rivers brink and his sister stood afar off uh, to with what would be done to him and the daughter of Pharaoh you got to see this came down to wash herself at the river and her maidens walked along by the rivers side. And when she saw the ark among the flags, uh, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. Then she then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, talking about Miriam, shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child for thee? 
And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son, and she called his name Moses. And she said, because I drew him out of the water. Now, now when you're talking about the P factor of God, can you? Nobody could plan this stuff like God. <laughs> Nobody could put this stuff together like God, while having his purpose in mind, by having his promise in mind, he has his people in mind. And that's why you and I gotta get excited about it. You know, the biggest business in the world, uh, brothers and sisters, is, is human life, is people. You take people out of the equation and all other business is gone. And the biggest business for God has always been people, his people. And here we are seeing another phase of God's covenant, God's promise made. Here it is now going to be made as the Moed, Mosaic law, I mean the Mosaic covenant. And so we see covenant after covenant after covenant because why? God has a purpose. God has a plan. God is working something out. Now I know a lot of people really don't want to believe it, but God's purpose is being worked out even through the life of Donald Trump. Come on. All right, God's purpose is being worked out even through the life of Barack Obama, even through the life of Joe Biden. God's purpose, nobody, no persons can alter the purpose of God, the plan of God for, for this world. But God, but God, and here we are again. We know now uh, 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 God blessed Abraham and blessed him uh, with his son, and his son had sons, and, and they had sons, and, and by the time it was, it was time uh, uh, for us to get in Exodus, it's over six million people. God multiplied uh, his people and he, he told Abram, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. He has done that. He has kept his promise. And now God is accomplishing his purpose. And remember, by the time we get to, to, to the life of Moses, all of the other stuff that happened. If you remember, all of the things happened in Genesis. A lot of things have happened. But God's purpose is still on course. God's promise is still on course. No matter about the genocide, no matter about Pharaoh who has come up and know not God, uh, it doesn't matter who they are. God can use them to get his purpose. God orchestrated it with Pharaoh. God orchestrated uh, uh, what he was doing uh, in the life of his people, the, the, the Hebrews, his, his, his chosen people. God is at work. We are God's chosen people, and we must understand if we're God's chosen people, we have to be a part of his plot. We got to be a part of his plan. We got to be a part of what he's, he's doing in this world, the strategic moves God is making in this world. That's why I say we ought to be honored to be a part of it. Uh, I, I heard somebody say this the other day uh, that I don't have to go to church. I get to go to church. Somebody missing that. <laughs> Amen. I don't, I don't have to be uh, uh, on a job. I get to go to a job. Amen. I don't have to uh, 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 just look at life as though it's just a haphazardous thing uh, when it ought to be an exciting thing. That God has blessed you and I to be who we are and where we are in his plan, in his scheme of the plans. I'm glad, you know, I used to I used to say to my mother, my name is Sammy, S-A-M-M-Y, 
and uh, all of my brothers have surnames, Michael, Charles, and William. And I was like, Mama, why you name me Sammy? That's a nickname. And she would say, shut up, boy, that's your name. <laughs> you know, she would pick on me all the time. But when I, when I became saved and started reading the word and started reading about Samuel, and everybody thinks my name Sammy is short for Samuel, and then I start saying, I got a good name. I got a, I got a connected name. You know, even when mama was na mama named me because she was in love with Sammy Davis Jr. And she named me Sammy David. When his name was Sammy Davis Jr. I said, Well, why didn't you name me Sammy Davis? She said, That's your name, boy. <laughs> I name you what I name you. And then, of course, Sammy Davis Jr. became a Jew. Uh, he, he converted so that he could marry a particular woman. And that was an altar. And I say, so when he did, and my mother say she hated him after that. <laughs> I say, so why you didn't change my name? She say, shut up, boy. That was your name. And I'm grateful for my name. I got a chance to really uh, talk with mother, taking care of her for her last five years on planet earth uh, about my name and about all the things that was going on in the world when I was born and all those kinds of things. And you and I, when we discover these truths about God, and when we discover these truths about where we are in the equation of, and the factor of what God is working out through his, through his promises and through his purpose and through his preparation, you and I ought to be glad. Do you know that when you are sitting in the midst of any kind of circumstance, anywhere, you are a particular person planted in place and positioned there so that God may be seen, so that God may be known, so that God may be heard. Somebody missing that because you are part of his plan. I was sitting and watching uh, from my office today, a uh, young lady sitting in the break room, and I noticed she was there a long time, but I didn't know uh, what was going on. Then I seen two, three people go sit down with her and talk with her. I didn't want to be nosy, but let me tell you, Christians ought to be spiritually nosy because of what we bring to the table. And so uh, I didn't say anything. I, did, I just kept passing by there. And then uh, when I went in uh, to, to clock out for lunch, then I walked in and there was somebody else in there with the lady and they were standing up praying. I said, I want some of that. And so I, I went and just grabbed their hand and, and got in there with them. I didn't know what they were praying about. I didn't, I, I, I had no idea, but, but they were praying. I wish somebody hear me. I wanted to be a part of the prayer of whatever was going on. When they got done, nothing was really said uh, or talked about. And I said, whatever it is, I say, praise God in the midst of it. I say, you've been picked by God for whatever it is you're dealing with and you're going on. Thank God for him picking you because he want to be glorified through whatever it is going on. And she said, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. And that's how I left it. And that's how you and I must see things. That's how you and I must see things uh, when, when the Lord, when we know that the Lord has a purpose uh, going on in this world is also inclusive of us because we're part of what he's doing. Here is Moses in the midst of a genocide, in the midst of a horrible time going on, people still get mad. And if I, if I could say it, and I ain't scared, a man and a woman still get mad. The Bible chose to put it in there. The Bible shows us believers, Levites, a man and a woman who are already connected to people of faith. Get married in the midst of a genocide while they're in slavery in Egypt down in Goshen ghetto. <laughs> Somebody got to see that. Look like we the only culture, and I'm talking about us, we look like we the only culture don't want to stay in the path of God. Everybody else is multiplying. That's true, Everybody else outgrowing uh, the black culture. We're not the leading culture, no. Hispanics are. 
They still get married. They still have the children. They still doing all of that. And here we are sitting quiet and they're passing laws uh, about abortion. We must stand up for God and speak up for God. God is speaking. God has a purpose going on in this world and it ain't going to suit everybody's fancy. And you and I must trust God and I, you know, uh, well, I, I can remember uh, even in this the same character personality, uh, Moses. You remember when he went up on the on the mountain to talk to God and get the law, and he was gone for some days, y'all. Uh, it's, it's considered uh, a month and a half or so. Moses was gone up, and when Moses came back down, the folk had got tired of waiting on him. And they were down there, you know what they were doing. They had them build a golden calf. They were yeah. worshiping idolatry because they had been uh, in Egypt so long. They had been engraved with that stuff. And, and they were like, it took too long, man. We decided we just were going to build us a golden calf and do something. And they were down there partying and doing all that. And Moses said, those who are for the Lord, stand on this side. And those who are not, stand on it. And God opened the ground and sucked them people up. God does not play when it comes to his purpose, when it comes to his plan, when it comes to, 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 to his promises. God does not play. You think God going to bring y'all all the way from Egypt after 430 years in captivity and bring y'all to the, to, the, to the foot of his mountain for you to get there and think you can have your own kind of party, your own kind of worship? No. And God opened the ground and suck them up and God has not a about that yet because he don't have to. That's right. That's right. He don't have to. Yes, sir. Moses is an example that God has factored us in. Yeah. And I love this story. Even though I got to come down off this mouth, I love this story. How God uses this man and this woman. Has this baby. Looks at their baby. And faith says, I'm not going to kill my baby. I'm not going to deal with that. Took the baby, hid the baby. And while hiding the baby, God tells her how to put a bassinet together. <laughs> wow. Wow. Tells her to put it together. Tells her what to do. Put the baby in. Put the baby on the same river that they're throwing all the other babies in. But God had purpose. And, and, and God allowed that baby to go upstream while the river was running downstream. Amen. Why you say that, River Sirene? Because uh, rivers run through the, the regions and run through the palaces and all of the rich places so they can get clean water fresh out of the mountains so that they can bathe and all of that. And of course the river was running down toward Goshen where all the poor folk was. Mm -hmm. and they're still doing that in Belize. I'm in Belize every year and they're still drawing water and uh, you can find them uh, cracking holes down in the, in, the, in the earth when they got a, a, a gusher uh, so that the water can run close to their house so they don't have a, a water bill. <laughs> <laughs> they want to get free water, which you can't blame them. If there's free water running at the ground over against being charged for water, uh, you're going to go get that water. And uh, they, they, they were bathing. God allowed the Pharaoh's daughter to be taking a bath at the same time. That was dead out. He was... <laughs> blowing the baby upstream had his sister following the bassinet. Anybody see God? Yes, sir. That's God at work. And, 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 and if you just think about now, you can think about it. Since you've come to know the Lord, come to know the Lord in the way that you know the Lord. You can look back now and know that your own life has been purposed. And so I challenge you tonight don't get discouraged. I know what you're looking at. But spend time looking up and not out. That's right. <laughs> the outlook is always going to be dark. 
but the outlook is always bright. It's been time. I shared, I shared, uh, I think it was a youth Sunday at a church that when I was born, my mother had a craving. I'm out of Appaloosa, Louisiana. My mother was craving uh, cornstarch and hot sauce. That's what she ate. <laughs> cornstarch and hot sauce. When I was born, I was born with my head full of cornstarch, my whole body full of cornstarch. And my eyes was bloodshot red. And they just knew. I mean, they could smell the hot sauce in the birth room. They just knew. They say, we can't tell you if this baby is going to be blind or not. But here I am. <laughs> my mother never had to deal with a blind day as what the doctor said. What I'm trying to tell you is who's in charge. And God not only has the word, but he has the last word and the final word. And so why are we hearing and why are we listening, why are we paying attention to the news, why are we keeping up with what's going on, make sure that you and I are reminded by the word of God. I suggest now to folks, and they laugh at it, that when they, when they get through watching the news, read your Bible. <laughs> it's serious. Read your Bible after you watch the news at night, and I like in the, uh, national news and I like local news. And I know some people don't want to even watch local news. But uh, how you gonna know what's going on in the house behind you if you don't watch the local news? It might be on your street. Uh, watch it to keep up with it. You never know where we are needed to minister. And so we see that all of this uh, about the P factor of God, not only his promises, for being kept in Abraham. Not only is God's promises and purposes being kept uh, in, 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 in Moses, but if you keep on following the trail, you will see that in God's promises is the promised seed. And that promised seed is Jesus. Jesus comes through the bloodline of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jesus comes through this same bloodline. And so, you know, brothers and sisters, sometimes we so uh, blinded by the promise that we never get a chance to see the seed. <laughs> but you and I must see the seed, not in the flesh, but in our faith. Yes, sir. Many of those of the old days of the Old Testament, they believed God, Hebrews say, they believed God and it was counted unto them as righteousness. Moses' parents believed God. They trusted God. No matter, they didn't fear the Pharaoh. They knew the law. They knew the ordinance. They knew what could have happened to them. But we see that Moses was being nurtured by his own mother, so she was pouring into him the history. She was pouring into him the word of God. She was sharing with her baby while she was nursing her baby. And I share with this. This is the first sign in the Bible of, of, uh, of welfare. <laughs> Amen. Government welfare. Pharaoh was in charge and the daughter was going to pay Moses' mama to take care of her own baby. That's welfare, y'all. <laughs> Amen. She took care of God, that's, that's just like God. I say that's just like God. Yes, sir. That's just like God. And so I trust and hope that you've gotten something out of this message out of the, the uh, 12th chapter of Genesis 12, 13, 14, and 15, and then Exodus 2. I certainly hope that you understand that God is at work. And so you and I ought to be praising God right now, right now yes, that we are included in his purpose. We're included in his promises. And somebody ought to see that God got his hands on you. That God got his hands on your life. I have a friend who's a business uh, person with me. We do business together and we have our office in the same place and um, our warehouse in the same place. And uh, 
he lost his keys. And he said, man, you know, I went down there and asked them people to let me borrow the, the bolt cutters to cut my lock off. Uh, they can come and cut it off for me. They want to charge me um, $150 just to cut the lock off. I say, really? Who did you talk to? And uh, uh, he, he, said, he told me who he talked to. I said, no, nah, that don't sound right. I said, follow me down there. So I went down to the office and I said, hey, Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah, listen, I got a lock I need to cut off, man, because we done lost the keys. He said, well, go right there. Go right over there and get the cutter and go ahead and cut it, Brother Brother sit right <laughs> Or walk that side with the cutters. And he said, man, you got favor. <laughs> I, I, we couldn't cut it. And so I gave him back the cutter and, uh, and uh, we went back to the office and Jeremiah called me back and said, uh, Miss Silverian, um, since y'all couldn't cut that off, I can cut it off for you. If you call me tomorrow, I'll cut it off for you and I'll put another lock on there for you and I have the key in your mailbox here. And don't worry about the lock. I'll, I'll let you have a brand new lock. You don't worry about it. And the, the owner of the, of the lock that's gonna be cut is sitting there listening to it on the phone. He said, man, I don't understand it. He said, they just told me that the other day. I say, favor ain't fair. <laughs> Listen, I may not be God's favorite, but I'm grateful that I have his favor. Amen, amen. And that's what you and, you and I must thank God for. As we think about the P factor of God, his purposes, his promises, his people, his plans, his provisions, his protection. You can go on and on. But you, you must thank God that you are inclusive. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for reminding us that you're not only a God who makes a promise, but you're a God who can keep your promises. We thank you for the promises you've made concerning your church, and particularly new beginnings. We thank you for the preacher, pastor, personality of Pastor Matthew Davis. Yeah. We pray that you would keep him and his wife, keep the men and women and members of this church. Continue to do what you're doing as they continue to minister to others, minister to other congregations, assisting and giving them a place to be able to use the facility to worship until they are able to do what they need to do. And so God, we thank you for factoring us into the equation of what you're doing. Lord, we pray for our families, we pray for our children and our children's children, that we can remind them that you are God who is still in control and keeping your promises. We thank you we praise you. We love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. What do we do after this, Brother Miles? Do we take up our offering? Uh, we uh, offer the invitation. <laughs> All right. Amen. Amen. All right. And at this time, for those who may have heard uh, the word of God, and, and upon hearing the word of God as you have entered the building, as you have uh, come online to to come into this message uh, for tonight through the Bible lesson. Um, if you were without the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior upon uh, coming online and joining us, um, we certainly offer you Jesus Christ. It's very simple. All you have to do is come to that place in your heart, which we call the ABCs. Admit that you need God. Admit that you need a Savior. Believe in your heart that God sent his Son into the world and that his Son, Jesus Christ, died for our sins on a cross. And that when they buried him, God the Father raised him from the dead just as he had promised. And even now, Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father. If you confess those things, those ABCs, admit, believe,
confess, you can receive Jesus as your personal Savior. Uh, if you desire, you can call this church. You can um, send an email to the church, to the pastor. Or you can call this church and they will uh, be glad to receive your phone call and minister to you wherever you are uh, that you might become uh, more aware of your position uh, by accepting Jesus Christ, your position in God. Without the Son, you cannot have the Father. And so right. you must accept the Son in order to be saved in order to become a part of God's chosen family, you must come through Jesus Christ. You must come through the door. And so we welcome you. We invite you. We pray for you. We hope that you make a decision tonight uh, while you're sitting and listening on your phone or on your tablet or on your laptop or on your desktop, that you come to that point where you trust God Remember the P factors. God is up to something. He's up to something. He has a promise. He's fulfilling. He has a purpose in our lives. He has a purpose for this world. Uh, he has provisions and protection uh, for those of you who trust him and don't doubt him. If you got the faith, God's got the power. Amen. All you have to do is try. You don't have to always see God to trust Him. You don't have to always track God to trust Him. But God leaves evidence that He is God. Yes. And so if you desire Him in a real way, we hope that you would trust Him and never doubt Him. God bless you. May God keep you is our prayer. Everybody sing me. Amen. 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 God bless you. You are dismissed. What do we do at this time, for Miles? All right, all right. Let's get our offerings together. And for those of you who are still online with us, in that same light, you can bless this ministry of New Beginnings Church by sending a love offering. You can bless this church who has so much uh, purpose uh, in the kingdom. They are doing a great work here in Houston, Texas. They're doing a great work here in the, the um, um, I think I, this is called Sunnyside. Still Sunnyside, ain't it? This not Sunnyside, what they call this, Pear Lane? Pre-Pear Lane? <laughs> Southeast Houston. Amen. Uh, a great work is going on. The impact of this ministry is meeting uh, the spiritual needs of so many. And so we certainly invite you to become a part of it. And uh, tune in um, for their worship on Sunday. Uh, you would be blessed to hear Pastor Davis, Matthew Davis. Be blessed to hear um, Minister of Music, Sister, Sister Davis. And they will bless you tremendously. God bless you. May God keep you. Here's our prayer. Amen. Y'all have a basket over.